What's up boys and girls, it's your boy Johnny, aka Crew90, and today, you're going to take a shower with me. So today's video is going to be about shower safety, and I figured, what better place to film a video about taking a shower than in the shower? So, first, we need to get into our shower attire. Yes, this is shower attire when you're filming a video for YouTube. I don't want to hear anything about it. So, and from here, I'm just going to show you everything from getting into the shower to how to properly be in the shower and be safe. Alright, so the first challenge that you're going to experience as an amputee trying to take a shower is actually getting into the shower. Because if you're like me and you have a bathtub shower, then you have to get over this ledge. And if you've already let the water warm up, then the inside of the shower is already going to be wet. So if you just jump up and over and try to jump in, you're going to hit that ground, leg up in the air, head cracked open, going to the hospital, brains coming out like Humpty Dumpty. You don't want that. I don't want that. Nobody wants that. So you need to find a way to get into the shower easily, safely, and effectively. What I do is I lead with my sound leg up and over, and then it's firmly in. Then I bring my amputated leg over. Now, this doesn't matter if you're above knee or below knee, how much you're missing. As long as you have a butt, you can do this maneuver. And I will say, a lot of what I'm going to show in this video is only going to work if you're missing, like, the type of limb amputation that I'm missing. Um, some of the maneuvers that I'm going to show you, I guess you could do even if you're above knee, but a couple of them you're not going to be able to do unless you at least have a knee. But this is something that will be able to be done no matter where your amputation level is. Because now that you're in the tub, you can literally just stand up okay so now that you're in the shower what next well as long as you have a window which a lot of showers that I've had in my life have had windows some haven't but it does seem like it's pretty you know good chance you're gonna have a window as long as you have one you can do what I'm already doing right now which is brace yourself on the windowsill so this actually gives you some good support and whether you're above knee or below knee it doesn't matter as long as you have at least one leg this is a viable option so you have this method which just gives you both hands free so you know if you want to do whatever you have your hands free but the other option which gives you a little bit more support but takes one of your hands completely out of commission and i'll show you is to do this now i'm actually fully braced on the windowsill now this one like i said you have no use of that hand it is fully firmly locked in but you're not slipping at all. You are fully in there, your leg is out, but you are firmly in this shower. Now, I don't particularly like this method that much. I will use it sometimes if I'm like really feeling, you know, oh, I, I think I'm gonna slip, but I prefer to just put my hand like this because that at least gives me, I can, you know, hold a bar of soap in one hand if I'm doing something with my other hand. And you know, it's, it's a lot better. It gives you some freedom of maneuverability. However, if you really need your hands completely free and you do, or you don't have a window, to do this with, there is another option. All right, so now for the other position. I am missing my right leg from a little bit below the knee down, so I have my knee and it's actually on the right side of my body where the amputation is. So that means that if I'm facing the water, my bad limb is up against the wall. This gives me an option. I can actually brace myself directly on the soap holder. Now, I'm not putting my full weight on the soap holder because it's not designed to hold a body, it's designed to hold a bar of soap but it does at least give me something to put a little bit of weight on, which gives me a little bit of stability, which is what you need when you're in the shower. And I will still also tend to do this, but at least if I take my arm off, I'm at least a little bit stable. Now, if you don't have a soap dispenser or you, know, you just don't wanna put any weight on it, then you can put it directly on the wall. And I'll back up a little bit and show you. Now, this actually is surprisingly a little bit more stable than it might look. And yes, even when this is wet from the shower going and it's soapy and you know, there's a lot of moisture in the air. This is still a lot of stability that you might not have expected to get. Now, again, I'm not going to endorse this because if you do it and you hurt yourself, I don't want you to get mad at me. But this is something that I do in the shower and it gives me the freedom to use both of my hands. Now, the last thing that I'll do when I'm in the shower is something that literally anybody can do, even if you're missing both your legs or if you're missing one leg, but it's literally from like the butt all the way down. It doesn't matter. And that is something as simple as this. I will sit in the shower. Oh, gross. You're sitting in the shower. That's so gross. The shower is a bathtub. If you've ever taken a bath, you have sat in the shower, theoretically. So this is perfectly fine. And 
it gives you places that you can grab things that are right at your reach. A lot of times I'll just feel clean, like I'm gonna take a bath, but really I'm taking a shower. I can wash myself, it gives me perfect abilities to do anything that I need. I am completely 100% stable because I am sitting. And if I do need to stand up because like I wanna get a better stream of water, you know, you do have the, the pressure kind of dissipates as it comes lower and lower. So maybe I really wanna get some good shower water pressure, I will stand up and I'll use the other options that I just showed you. But I mean, 90% of the time, to be honest, I'm sitting. Now, this option is very, very easy, and it's probably the safest option out there, with the exception of literally using a shower chair specifically designed for use in the shower. But I was way too young to ever use one of those. They gave one to me right after I lost my leg. I was 20 years old, and it was just a mental thing to me. I was like, this is something that old people are supposed to use. Now, if you are a young amputee and you use one, I don't mean any offense by that, that was just my opinion. I literally saw the exact same chair in my elderly grandfather's shower, and I was not about to use that type of chair. In my mind, that was an old man's or old woman's chair. It wasn't happening. So I developed these different methods. Now, whenever you close your eyes, you automatically lose some of your balance. So even no matter how stable you feel, you start doing shampoo, you close your eyes or whatever, you are gonna lose a little bit of your balance. I will brace myself on the wall with my knee or I will hold on to the windowsill. But a lot of times I will sit and I will put my shampoo in my hair while I'm seated because it is the most stable position for you. At that point, I either rinse it out while still seated or I'll go ahead and stand up and brace myself like I was showing you. But these are all some simple, really easy ways that you can feel safer in the shower than just literally standing up, just balancing on one leg like a flamingo. But so anyways, these are just some tips and tricks that you can use while you're in the shower to feel safer um, other than just basically standing up on one leg or doing what I have had a lot of amputees tell me they do, which is not shower anymore. They pretty much exclusively take baths. I have had so many amputees tell me that they don't shower because it's too unsafe. So. I didn't like that, I don't really like taking baths, I prefer to take showers, but I don't wanna just stand on one leg and hope I don't fall, nor do I wanna use that old man shower chair. So these are some tips and tricks I came up with. Hopefully at least one of them is beneficial to you. Again, I don't endorse any of them because if any of y'all get hurt doing my tricks, I am not responsible. But for real and all in all seriousness, I do hope that it can help at least somebody. Any of those things are possible for anybody with any amputation level, except for of course the one where you use your leg, I mean your knee. If you are missing above knee, then that one won't work. But everything else, the windowsill options or just sitting like this directly on the floor, of course, these are all very useful for no matter what level of amputation you have. So I hope that this helped. And uh, with that, I'm gonna get out of this tub because I don't like being in the tub if I'm not actually taking a shower.